Hi, my name is Wouter Emery and I'm the founder of Airshaper. In this first video on drone design, we will be discussing airfoils, the basic principles and how they apply to fixed wing drone design. Rotary wings, quadcopters for example, they rely on the vertical thrust of their propellers to keep them in the air. Fixed wing drones are much more conventional, like regular airplanes, and they rely on lift of the wings as they move through the air to keep them afloat. Now this typically eliminates the possibility to hover locally, but it greatly increases the efficiency during flight, which increases your flight time, which is very interesting where you're mapping a terrain, for example. Now fixed wing drones, they come in many different designs and shapes as well. Some look just like minified airplanes, with a propeller at the front, a fuselage in the middle, two wings on the side, and a tail at the back with horizontal and vertical flaps to help steer the airplane. Blended wings, on the other hand, look very futuristic, with the wings and the fuselage morphed into one single piece without even a tail at all. Whichever design you go for, you will need to choose some kind of wing section, called an airfoil, to generate the required lift for your drone. In more advanced designs, the shape or even the size of this airfoil can change along the width of the wing. But it's always good to start with some basic hand calculations first. Let's start by naming the basic parts of an airfoil. At the front you have the leading edge and at the back you have the trailing edge. Both are connected via the upper surface, also called the suction surface, and the lower surface, also called the pressure surface. The center line, the straight line, connecting the leading edge to the trailing edge is called the cord of the airfoil. The camber line, on the other hand, runs nicely in between the upper and lower surface of the wing, indicating the center line, which is not always straight. The angle of attack is the angle between the cord of the airfoil and the relative wind vector. And the relative wind vector is typically a combination of the velocity of the drone itself and the wind that exists in the atmosphere. Essential to airfoils is how much lift and drag they generate. Lift is the vertical force perpendicular to the wind direction and drag is the force along the wind direction. And they vary in function of the angle of attack of the airfoil. And there's a great website called airfoiltools.com that provides you with tons of data on different airfoils. To illustrate how lift and drag curves can be used, let's have a look at a symmetric airfoil with an identical upper and lower surface, like the NACO 0012, for example. At zero angle of attack, it doesn't generate any lift at all, only drag. But as soon as you rotate the leading edge up into the air, you create a positive angle of attack, creating lift on the airfoil. Now, if you increase the angle of attack too much, you pass a critical point and you enter the aerodynamic stall zone. And this is caused by a separating flow at the suction side or the suction surface of the airfoil. A typical example of when this happens is when an aircraft or an airplane is trying to pull up too fast during takeoff, entering the stall zone, losing lift and risking crashing. Now, if you want to learn more about flow separation, you can watch our separate video on vortex generators. Another effect of increasing the angle of attack is the increase in aerodynamic drag, which could offset the positive effect of the lift. To find the sweet spot, we can have a look at the curve of the lift over drag, which plots the lift over drag ratio in function of the angle of attack. In case of the NACA 0012, for example, we will see that it reaches its maximum efficiency at an angle of attack of 8 degrees. At that point, the lift generated by the airfoil is 80 times bigger than the aerodynamic drag. That's not the best you can get though. In contrast to symmetric wings, asymmetric wings sacrifice performance at negative angles of attack to increase the lift and reduce the drag generated at positive angles of attack or even at an angle of attack of zero degrees. With airfoil tools, you can easily compare two different airfoils, like the symmetric NACA 0012 versus the asymmetric NACA 6412. And in this comparison, we can see that the NACA 6412 peaks at a lift over drag ratio of over 140. Now you'll have noticed that in these curves, we don't use the real lift and drag values, but rather we use the lift and drag coefficients, CL and CD. Now this makes it easier to compare different airfoils, irrespective of their size. They're calculated by dividing the lift or drag force per unit width of the airfoil by the product of the stagnation pressure and the cord length. So when it comes to selecting an airfoil for the main wing, the one that keeps the drone in the air, you're usually better off with an asymmetric profile. Keep in mind though that asymmetric profiles sometimes feature a more narrow efficient operating window and more drastic changes in the lift curve. This can make the drone more difficult or nervous to fly. 
For flaps, wings and rudders that need to generate both positive and negative lift, it's more interesting to have an asymmetric operating curve and thus a symmetric profile. If the flaps are in their neutral position most of the time, when mapping a terrain for example, it's more interesting to select an airfoil with low drag at zero angle of attack. If the drone will change direction fast and often, like a race drone for example, it's more interesting to focus on an airfoil with a more performant and wider lift curve. Now before we end this talk on airfoils, it's important to notice that the curves are only valid for a given Reynolds number, which can vary in function of speed and size. So before you start selecting airfoils, it's important to have a rough estimate of the size and the velocity of your drone before you start looking at curves. If you want to learn more about the Reynolds number, have a look at our separate video on that topic. So that was it for part one of drone design videos. If you liked it, click the like button. If you want to stay tuned for more, subscribe to our channel. Thanks a lot for watching. See you soon. Bye bye.